Welcome to How Ecology Works. In this podcast, we cover all topics in ecology and how you might apply them in your future career. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to How Ecology Works. Uh, today, I have Dr. Emilio Bruna, and uh, this is a, a really good opportunity to get his uh, perception of the peer review process and how important that is to us as ecology as ecologists and how important it is to ecology in general. I think it's a great topic to cover so that you all understand why we rely on that process and and uh, the inherent values and and some of the intricacies of that process and what that means. So Dr. Bruna was formerly the editor of Biotropica and is very, you know, uh, I guess in tuned with with all of those those details about the publishing process. So, Dr. Bruno, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and uh, especially since I get to talk about one of the things that I think is in- incredibly important and incredibly valuable, but also incredibly mysterious to most people, which is the process by which we take all the blood and sweat and tears and frustration and agony and exhilaration that comes with doing research. Um, whether it's in the field or in the lab or, uh, you know, uh, on a supercomputer and then getting it, getting that out there for other scientists and and the public to read and appreciate and learn from and build on, Um, which is that that's what, that's what publishing is all about, right? It's, it's Mm -hmm. how we as um, scholars communicate with other scholars and the broader public about what we're working on and what the implications of that are and suggest to others what the next um, step should be in kind of our, our pursuit of understanding the world around us. Right. And, and the kind of current way we do that, um, which is the kind of the system of uh, publishing articles in journals is something that's essentially been unchanged um, for a, uh, uh, you know, since the 1800s, more or less, the late 1800s. And uh, that has its upsides and downsides. Uh, Part of that is because it's a system that I think works really well. Part of it is because uh, we're sometimes a little slow to adopt change. Maybe the word is scared to adopt change. But, uh, (laughs) But basically what it is, is we have a very stereotyped formula for how we as scientists communicate our research results and have them vetted uh, before they can get out into the public. Uh, part of the feeling here is that, that what we do is really important. And I really believe that. Um, I, you know, I, I think that no matter what someone is doing as a scientist, um, it matters. It's valuable. It's important. It, you know, you could teach us more about the behavior of some species bug or deforestation in the Amazon or how we should manage our agroecological systems or um, some fancy mathematical or statistical approach to studying communities that it doesn't really matter. Um, but it, it's going to be important. Um, it's going to be important because other people will build on it. It's going to be important because it solves problems. Sometimes we don't even know why it's going to be important until much later down the road. But we have a responsibility to make sure that when we put it out there, uh, we have thought through as thoroughly as possible, what we're saying, what we're communicating, what we're concluding from the data, um, what we're suggesting to others that the data might mean. And that means that we package it into um, you know, a, an article. Uh, we write up a document laying out what the questions were, what we did, what we found, and what we think it means. All scientific articles are essentially the same thing, that right there. And then we circulate it amongst other scientists who then sit there and try to poke holes in whatever arguments you're making. Um, I, I dispute when people say that what reviewers are doing when they review our manuscripts is trying to find uh, the flaws. They're looking for reasons to reject your articles from journals, right? That, I don't think that's the approach what we're trying to do. As a reviewer and as an editor, um, what I always try to encourage other editors and reviewers to do is point out to people how they could make their work better. 
right? And sometimes, unfortunately, mm -hmm. what that means is we have to say, like, you really blew it on the analyses or the design of your experiments, or you really can't say what you want to say. Um, but our goal mm -hmm. ultimately should be to take someone's hard work and help them make it better. And people, uh, there are over 25,000 uh, scientific journals out there uh, in the world. Um, some of them have kind of uh, different audiences. Some of them are designed for people who are studying birds. Some of them are for people studying insects. Some of them are more general ones for, say, ecologists or biochemists. And then there's some that, you know, kind of are more high profile. They're, they're where people try to publish what they think is the most exciting work that's out there that broadly has really important implications for people. And so, um, but all, all, all of these journals work in more or less the same way. You package up what you've done, you submit it to them, uh, the editors take a look at it, they see if it's been put together in a way that um, will reach the right audience, that's the audience of their journal. They ask a couple of specialists, somewhere between two and five specialists to take a look at it and provide feedback on it. And then it goes through this process. Sometimes it's really quick. It can take a couple of months. Sometimes it can be really long. I've had papers that take over a year to go through this process because it goes back to the authors who then respond to the comments. And then you submit it again and it goes back and forth. And eventually the decision is made that like, yeah, this is, this is ready for the public to consume and it gets and it gets published and this process hasn't really changed in you know uh 150 years or more um it it should change there's things about it that are that are really important i mean you know um no one is arguing that um having two people review a paper uh, is going to make it perfect those two people may make mistakes they could find flaws um they they could be wrong Right. Um, so it's really important that editors, especially who are the, the kind of, they, they really do their job in terms of working to make sure that the work is being treated fairly by uh, people with different perspectives, um, with different forms of training in different places to try to really help the authors um, improve on their work as much as possible. And, and that's kind of the core of what we do. Uh, it can be really slow sometimes, it can be really frustrating. Um, because your work might go to a journal, then get rejected, and then it goes somewhere else. And, and I think we can do a lot of things to improve the process. But I think that kind of fundamentally, that's how it works. And, and that's how we communicate our results. That's kind of what's considered the gold standard right now um, for scientists um, to communicate their research results with the public. It's very interesting. I think... Uh some of the the value of that system is that you know we're trying to stay as objective as scientists as possible and you know interpret data within the limitations of it and having peers to evaluate not only how the the data was collected and whether or not you're actually measuring what you set out to measure and whether or not you perform the appropriate analyses on it but also to make sure that you're interpreting those results in a way that that fit with the uh, the way the data was collected, so that it remains as objective as possible. I think that's really important. I think that objectivity is key. I think it's also really important to remember that people are people, and and we have our own biases or strong opinions, and that's okay. So I I think that one important misconception is mm -hmm. that uh, editor, uh, sorry, reviewers will say this is this needs to change and that in order for you to get a paper accepted then you have to change it to whatever the reviewer says that's actually not true um, you are welcome to disagree in fact i a lot of times as an editor would purposely ask people to review paper who i knew would disagree because they're going to be the strongest critics but the best reviewers are the ones who say i completely disagree but you, the way you did this study is robust your analyses are solid so while i disagree with your conclusions um, I, I can't stand in the way of this being published because I just disagree with your interpretation. That's fine. The, the science proceeds mm -hmm. not just when people reach a consensus, but when people vehemently disagree about conclusions and then go on and do a series of experiments themselves, you know, to to because they disagree, because they want to see alternatives, because they want to demonstrate that, in fact, the other person is wrong. So disagreement is a 
really integral part of advancing science. The problem is that some people have a, an issue um, distinguishing, um, disagreeing with someone with whether um, whether the work is robust and and should be published. And and that's the that's the tr that's the hard thing to learn is to be able to say I completely disagree with you, but I can't disagree that the work is well done. And so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it out there so that I can go out and do research on my own to show that you're wrong. Like and and that's okay. We learn from that. And don't get me wrong. The system, because it relies on a small group of people and people have biases and opinions and it's hugely imperfect. I mean, this is not a perfect system. Um, a lot of times when people ask me about the peer review system and they say it's completely broken, it doesn't work, we should be looking for alternatives. I say, look, there are ways to improve it. I'm reminded a lot of, um, you know, I don't know if you know Winston, Winston Churchill's um, quote about democracy. He said democracy was the worst form of government except for all the others. And that's kind of how I feel about the peer review process in publishing, right? Um, there are there are lots of ways it can be improved. I haven't seen right. one that's necessarily better. Now, there are aspects of publishing that I think are really important and that maybe people don't appreciate. And that's things like, what is open access publishing? Or um, what are preprints? And these are things that have emerged in the last um, years that I think have really started to revolutionize the world of science. I mean, one of them is that one of the mm -hmm. knocks on the typical peer review system is that it often took, say, a couple of years between when you submitted your work for publication and when it was finally published in the journal. Now, that was sped up a little bit when we went from publishing paper journals to journals online. So you can speed up the time. Um, but the other way it's sped up is that now people have databases where they can publish their um, draft articles while they're being reviewed so that other people can see them and be aware of what's going on. In fact, we submitted an article yesterday for publication and also submitted a preprint so that other people can see it and read it and provide feedback to us and and um, maybe take advantage of it, even though the actual article itself won't be published. Now, it's not a peer-reviewed paper yet. It's a preprint. We, we You, know, you want to make sure people know that, but it's really valuable mm -hmm. scholarship. Um, and we think it would be of use for people and and um, we welcome people's feedback on it. So it's really kind of democratized access to to research because it gets it out there faster. Everybody can get their ideas faster without having to wait for this, you know, these gatekeepers to kind of decide like, yeah, this is out there. Um, it, the the users of that research have to take it mm -hmm. with a grain of salt and have to be really critical um, it, as you should be critical even when you're reading the published articles, right? People make mistakes, mm -hmm. mistakes get through. You, you should always be critical, but but that's one way. Sure. And the other thing I think that's been a real revolution that I I think a lot of people don't quite understand is the idea of open access. And and that is because, uh, you know, most scientific journals, uh, historically, you've needed a subscription to read. And those subscriptions can be really expensive. And uh, they can be really expensive mm -hmm. for scientists anywhere, but especially in the vast majority of the world, um, you know, uh, you know, if you're outside of the United States and Europe, uh, you know, subscriptions to these journals for a lot of libraries and a lot of institutions in the global South can be outrageously expensive. And so open access is um, a form of publishing in which the reader doesn't have to pay to gain access to that literature. It's free to read. And it sounds wild mm -hmm. that this is considered a revolution, that the results of scientific research funded by the government <laughs> Um, should be available to the taxpayers of that country to read um, without having to pay for it. But in fact, that is not the case for most research. It's mind blowing to me. And and so open access tries to remedy that. It says, you know, <laughs> we're not going to charge people to read this. The, we still have to, you know, it, it still costs money to publish research. But but we're not going to charge the readers via subscriptions. We're going to find other ways to pay for journals so that Everybody in the world, no matter where they are, no matter what their financial condition, no matter what kind of institution there are, non-scientists, scientists, doesn't matter. We think you should have access to the knowledge that's generated with, in many cases, your money as a taxpayer. And I think that that's really important. And that um, I think that open access mm -hmm. publishing, um, which is also, by the way, imperfect, has other flaws and other issues that it has to fix, um, has been a real revolution in that it is really democratized access to knowledge in ways that before it's inconceivable, um, you know, it was blocked off to to the public. Yeah, it's a really good point. Now, 
uh, do like that you brought up that you know it's sort of a lot of times this is thought of as from scientist a scientist's point of view as a conversation you're communicating with other scientists and sometimes you actually will have papers that are published and there's some classic examples of this uh, that i that i can think of but uh, where you publish a paper and then the uh, the opposing viewpoints will be presented by other scientists rebutting that and uh, you may even have three or four comments going back and forth where scientists are literally uh you know commenting on each other's work in the form of publications and sometimes that stimulates new uh new experiments or or things like you mentioned as well where they're uh, trying to demonstrate why they think the other side was wrong so it's really a, a fun thing to be a part of but also an important process to help push science and knowledge forward i think that one of the things that people forget is that when they see a 15 page paper in front of them that they have to review that what that actually represents is years and years and years often of people's blood and sweat and tears and work and excitement and failure and success and hard work and and so it's important for reviewers to um remember that uh, people have feelings and this is something that they take really uh, personally and so to try to always be supportive and uplifting even if they vehemently disagree with them there are ways to do that in a way that focuses on trying to make the science better rather than trying to prove a point and, or um uh you know come out a winner um what wins is science and uh, it's good to disagree and we can disagree politely and we should be mindful that not everybody's in a position where they feel like they can um you know, stand up to someone who's, say, a towering figure in the field who's reviewed their paper. Um, there's nothing worse as a kind of a junior scientist, grad student, postdoc or something than when you read a review of your paper by, and maybe the person signed their name and you realize it's a, you know, it's a really important person in the field and they completely disagree with you, even though you know you're right, you know, you feel really strongly about your results. And so we should, we should be mindful of the fact that people at different stages of their career are learning how to do science, they're getting better at science, and we should be humble enough to recognize that sometimes we're wrong. I mean, I think most good scientists have an, ex, you know, truly the best scientists, the people that I respect the most, uh, will cheerfully tell you that they have an experience um, in which they strongly believe something that was a conclusion of their results, and someone else came out and did something, and it turns out they were completely wrong. And um, rather than see that as a negative thing something that a position they have to defend from attack no matter what they actually say well okay um what does this really mean and then they use that as a launching pad to do some new and cool and exciting research and so the review process can be really difficult it can be really difficult for the authors it can be difficult at any stage of their career it can be more difficult at some stages of your career um, and it can be really difficult when we're dealing with some of the prickly personalities um, that we have um, around us um, but we should always be working to do a better job because this is um, the best way right now that we can ensure that the work we're doing is rigorous and careful and um, helping to to advance um, you know knowledge and push back the frontiers of what we know and what we're trying to learn and so i really believe it's a valuable exercise being a good reviewer makes you a better scientist um, and if you can explain something to your scientific community, that's just the first step. Um, the next step for us is um, trying to translate that research uh, into something that the general public can understand and appreciate the importance and the value of. After all, in a lot of cases, they're paying for it. So it's our responsibility to make sure that it's well done and, and that it's solid um, and that it's gonna be useful for other people uh, to build on. I uh, really appreciate that. Dr. Bruin, I think that's a great conversation for us to have and for the up and coming scientists in our classrooms that, you know, the, the, the uh, aspiring ecologist to understand the peer review process and how and why we use that. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to uh, come and visit with us about that. Any opportunity that we have to help people learn about what's going on behind the curtain is really important because um, I think that that will help demystify a lot of 
the misconceptions that we have about science and scientists and who they are. They're just people. They're people out there trying to make the world a better place. Thanks for listening to How Ecology Works. If you're interested in more topics like this, follow us at UF Deer Lab.